Well, CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell joins us now from Jerusalem. Uh, Chris, uh, the people you talked to already sent a signal that they were desperate and they had to call on Assad uh, to help them. This, of course, brings the Russians in. What, do you, what is your understanding? Well, that's exactly right, uh, Pat. And it's also a very fluid situation. As you mentioned, the Russians are actually going to have a, a no-fly zone over this uh, Turkish-Syrian border. That's something the SDF, the Syrian Democratic Forces, had asked for days that the United States would do. But right now, we understand that the Syrian forces, the Syrian army, is deployed along the Turkish-Syrian border, ex border, except where the fighting is going on. And uh, they're working with the SDF right now. And the other thing, Pat, that I've just been hearing just in the last hour or so is that right now it seems that the United States is still deployed in eastern Syria. Now, that could be very uh, important. If the United States does at least stay there, then I, I think it would prevent some, some uh, perhaps Iranian influence coming in to that part of Syria. What is Erdogan doing? What exactly? We, we understand that he's violated every single sanction or any uh, agreement he's made. Is that right? Exactly. He had agreed to uh, not create a humanitarian disaster. We're seeing that maybe 200,000 uh, people right now displaced. He had said that he would protect Christians and religious minorities. We know that Christians have fled for their lives. So Christians have been uh, been uh, been killed. We know that he wanted. He was supposed to protect civilians. Uh, civilians have been uh, indiscriminately bombed in this place. And so, really, you know, Pat, I think people need to understand what Erdogan's real goals were was ethnic cleansing along this whole border and he wanted and he said it openly there in the United Nations that he wanted one to two million Arab uh, <clears throat> Syrian refugees to replace that uh, that area he had done it in a free batch in mark in March of 2018 uh, uh, something that the world really had ignored and he wanted to do that here and one other thing Pat I think it's important to remember that it's coming out information that back in August the United States the SDF and Turkey had an agreement along that line that they would protect, they would have some sort of joint patrols. Uh, the uh, a part of that agreement was that the SDF would pull back its seasoned troops, uh, destroy defenses, take back its heavy weapons, and uh, and that and, and yet the U.S. pulled out of that agreement. And uh, one SDF uh, person said that they their chests were laid bare to the Turkish knives, and so that's so, some of the backstory of what happened with the United States agreement that was never kept with the SDF. Oh, Chris, uh, look. How does the U.S. stand now in the Middle East? What is our fallout for our country? You know, that's one of the major fallouts of this whole thing, Pat, is that the word of the United States has been diminished. If they're going to leave a U.S. ally, the number one ally in the battle against ISIS, and then and then uh, turn their backs on them, uh, you have to wonder that all the other uh, allies in the region uh, are going to suspect what the U.S. word can mean. It can embolden U.S. adversaries, Russia, the Syrian regime, or Iran, and uh, and think that this uh, the United States will be weak uh, when they protect their allies. One key area, uh, Pat, I think people need to realize is the KRG, actually the place where George just reported on. This is the Kurdish regional government. They're in the balance right now. They, they're looking to the U.S. Is the U.S. going to stand with them, or are they going to have to look to Iran? And that could have serious consequences throughout the Middle East and actually for Israel as well. Well, let's talk about Israel. Uh, this obviously is threatening Israel because it brings their enemies right up on the border. Exactly. And, and, you know, we have talked about this many times, that the Iranian regime wants to build a land bridge all the way from Tehran to the Mediterranean. Uh, if this can uh, decrease the U.S. influence, increase Iran's influence. Now, as I talked about the KRG, for example, if they're going to side with Iran, that just makes that land bridge that much stronger and makes Iran's goal to destroy Israel that much more immediate. And so I think people here, the uh, Israeli government, uh, today is the first day of Sukkot, the first Feast of Tabernacles. So we haven't seen any official word yet, but I'm sh sure, Pat, that they're looking very soberly at what the United States has done with their allies, the SDF, there in northeast Syria and what that consequences may mean for them and as well as all the U.S. allies in the Middle East. 
Is there any stopping Erdogan? He can do what he wants to now. Is that the? Is that what you are hearing? Well, actually, Pat, I think right now the, the Syrian army is actually acting like a buffer to Erdogan. And I think this is a very precarious position for Erdogan. He might have uh, bitten off more than he can chew. He's actually ironically asking NATO to come and help him against the, quote, terrorists. But I think he's really broken relationship with many of his European allies. And I think many of those would rather see uh, Turkey out of NATO than in NATO right now. So right now, as I said, it's a very fluid situation. But I think we can say the Syrian army deploying along the border right now is somehow containing this Turkish invasion. There is fighting going on in several areas, uh, but right now I think we can say that uh, it's a precarious situation because we don't know if Turkey is going to fire on the Syrian army. We don't know if the Syrian army is going to fight on them. So it's very uncertain right now, but at least possibly this could be containing uh, the Turkish invasion against northeast Syria.